been around the fiddle since I was born. Um, my dad and his brothers uh, play, they all three play fiddle. And um, dad learned the fiddle later in life uh, after moving away and being in the armed forces and uh, coming back to Kentucky. He made the connection, family connections with the fiddle through uh, his great uncle Claude Wells from West Liberty and previous generations back to Edmund Wells who founded Morgan County. So quite a few generations who played fiddle music in East Kentucky specifically. And he was able to be around a lot of great fiddlers. So when I came along, um, he played music and he, he played with some bands. So I traveled around and hung out with his friends and they were kind enough to mentor me, uh, not really giving me lessons, but more or less letting me just play with them and learn learn behind the, you know, learn by rote, by listening and uh, just trying to keep up with them. I got really interested in fiddle in college when I came to Moorhead State. Again, leaving home, I went to the University of Louisville and studied jazz and classical guitar. And then when I came back to Moorhead, I got really interested in fiddle music through dad again. So I'd go home every weekend like most students at Moorhead and I'd learn fiddle tunes from dad while I stayed at the house and then I'd go play gigs with this bluegrass band. So I was sort of learning bluegrass and old time fiddle tunes when I was about 19 years old. I spent most of my college career playing the fiddle even though I'd gone to school to learn jazz and classical guitar. And I still played rock and roll and country gigs uh, but the fiddle really became my passion. So I, I had the opportunity here at Moorhead to study with some really great fiddlers. Uh, Andy Carlson was uh, probably the most important and influential. But then again, I still played with Dad a lot, and he would hang out with John Harrod. When I finished college, I got hired as the archivist here at the Traditional Music Center. And most of my work in those early periods were with John Harrod's collections. So I would sit all day, every day, listening to East Kentucky fiddlers. That's where I, I think I got the most knowledge and background in East Kentucky fiddle music, was through John Harrod and his collection. And then John was the key to getting to know people like Roger Cooper and the recordings of Buddy Thomas and people that Roger learned from, and then the recordings of Ed Haley, and then Billy Don Stamper and Art Stamper and all of the Kentucky fiddlers who were alive at that point. Not just the fiddle music, but hearing the stories and the lives that these musicians led and the communities that they grew up in and the reasons they played fiddle music. It, it was really a whole cultural connection. The fiddle music was just a part of the whole connection to our place and the people from this place. Yeah, the fiddle music is a big part of Kentucky and folk culture. And the people in the place and the, the reasons they played these tunes. And to have a connection to the past and the present and the future. I, we pass that along in hopefully the same way that past generations have. But sitting face to face, fiddle to fiddle, and playing this music with other people too. And you know, being in a group and sitting with someone like Paul David Smith. And, John Harrod now, John's really kind of carrying the torch for this music. Uh, he and Jimmy McCallan and Roger Cooper are kind of our generation of master old time Kentucky fiddlers. So uh, we're, we're fortunate enough to go to their house really and just be welcomed like family and they want to see this music thrive uh, in the future as much as we do. Yeah, it's really ironic that the majority of people who play Kentucky fiddle tunes do not live in Kentucky at all. It's very popular in urban areas like Portland, Oregon, and Asheville, North Carolina, and even uh, Melbourne area of Australia. They play lots of Kentucky music in uh, England, Ireland. It has this worldwide appeal, <laughs> and you know we're we're trying to influence younger generations to get involved and become interested in their past. And, especially through family and communities. 
Yeah, and it's a part of Kentucky fiddle music that people aren't really very aware of. They think it's all, every tune is an old tune that probably came from Ireland or the British Isles here into the mountains, hills of eastern Kentucky, but a lot of fiddlers made up their own tune. They were very creative artists and musicians. They, just like songwriters today, previous generations were very creative. It wasn't just passing along these tunes from generation to generation. It was, there was this whole other process that's kind of become unknown today. It's old time fiddling, but a lot of it's new. <laughs> you have to have your own personality, your own style, your own voice when you play any instrument in any style. I, I, I think of all my favorite musicians in any genre or style of music and when you hear that person, when you hear Frank Sinatra sing, you know it's Frank Sinatra. And he may sing the song totally different from any other art, artist. So they all have their own voice and personality. And I think that's important for just music in general. I meet people everywhere. They say, you don't play that tune like Paul David Smith. And I say, well, I sat next to Paul for thousands of hours. And one of the most important things he always said was play this tune the way you, the way that you hear the tune and the way you feel the tune. My favorite fiddlers, Paul David and Art and Marion Sumner, and they all, they played old time, they played bluegrass and they played swing, Roger Cooper too. And they knew how to translate those styles through their instrument uh, appropriately, which is very difficult. And that's the other benefit of teaching. You have students who want to learn bluegrass fiddle specifically, so that's your opportunity to pass along that and think deeper about that style or old time fiddle. And stylistically, old time fiddle is one of the few styles of music that are a constant barrage of rhythm and notes, and there's no silence and space like there is in jazz. That's the from what I've learned, that that's the most important part of jazz is the silence. It's the notes you don't play. Old time fiddle music is the exact opposite. It is this constant rhythm and pulse um, that I, I think reflected the way of life as it was a few generations ago. It's not the same now, but in some way I guess it sort of is. We're all living this rat race of trying to survive. and. <laughs> So I, and I think that's maybe why people in these urban areas are attracted to this music. But it is that constant rhythm that dancers need. And it's fun to see someone else understand why you play the music. And see Linda and, and others passing it down and knowing that that's really the most important thing is sharing the music for no other reason but to play music together and, and to make others fall in love with it too. I mean, that's really the most important part of any music or any art. Just to keep it alive and growing. Mm -hmm.